so so it it's this hasn't got um, this hasn't got explanatory labels on each of the things, but you can see from what is already there now in the functionality that 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 um, all of this stuff is is there already. The idea of COVID passports and, and what have you and and and, and be back to be vaccinated. It's really what that's about is a way of um, creating value for big pharma as well in, in terms of saying uh, you don't get your benefits unless you've got that. And we can tell whether you've got that because what you'll have to do is is, is link it to your bank account. May I just mention something in relation to this? Mm. When I interviewed uh, Beverly Skeggs in 2018, when she had mm. done her research on, she's a sociologist, she wanted to do something on friendship and therefore decided to look at Facebook because that was almost like the new definition of friendship in this world. Um, and when we interviewed her, she did mention that when, and Peter Till would have been a part of this, when mm. Messenger was set up, uh, it had a functionality which they never switched on to transfer money. Right. But they never, sw but they never switched it on. Facebook, Facebook Messenger. Facebook has this thing called Messenger, yeah. And mm. um, it was always designed to transfer money, but they never switched it on. So, you know, you been, Libra would have been part of the whole thing. But, exactly. but that, would have, that would have been the intention from day one. You know, exactly. this is and not... No, that's, what, that's what she told me, yeah. Yeah, from from the absolute day one, you know, and, and, and Facebook is, is a creature of the noughties, you know, after the dot com bubble, that's when Facebook came up, approaching the dot com bubble and afterwards it was all friends reunited. Yeah, no, and, and then, um, oh, the one that Murdoch bought, the, the other MySpace. one, uh, MySpace, yeah. But yeah, so sorry, you were saying, so you were saying HSBC has open banking, which is appearing to say that people can leave money and decide where it goes next. It, it, it's got that functionality built into it. it, mm. it right. It doesn't say that, but that functionality is there. And, Just and tracking money. And it, tracking it's, it. probably, it's probably only the partial functionality, even as it stands. But it is there now. This is this is the big news. The big news is that all the open banking stuff. OK, I, I mean, basically, I looked at my app this morning and there was a thing that says, what is open banking? I thought, blimey, well, that's new. I mean, I'll have a look at that. And, and then, then I was, say, I was, you've got it. Yeah. And then I was speaking to um, I had a long chat earlier with 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 my ex-wife, who's still my, my business partner. Uh, I don't have an HSBC business account, but she does. And she went online to look at her business account. And this functionality is actually there now as well. And she hadn't been aware of it and was looking at it. I said, bloody hell, Rog, you know, yeah. That, mm. you know, and I started explaining how some of the different bits of it fit together. Um, in the light of the stuff that um, Shu, what, what she called the woman, the, the Harvard professor that wrote Shuboff. the books. Shuboff. Shuboff. She's talking about some of these sorts of things in, in that VPRO documentary. That book came out in 2019. And of course, um, lots of stuff happened. And, and it's not as well known as it would be if if the stuff hadn't happened when we got into the new year in 2020. Yeah, one of the things that she says in chapter one is she I remember having a real moment when she said, you know, people say that if you get it for free, then you're the product. And then after she says, but what's actually happening is they're trading behavioral futures data. It's it's your future behavior that they're trading. And it's she didn't say this, but it became obvious to me because I was looking at the NHS and TTIP and stuff like that. It became obvious that that is a massive health insurance thing. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, she she completely nailed it, and and um, that that video that that interview on VPRO with her is about an hour long. Now there's another guy on there, Indian guy that wrote a book about um, philanthropic capitalism and about you know fake, you know what it really is. 
Uh, interestingly enough, Jimmy Dawes having a go at him because he was critical of Elon Musk buying Twitter. Right now, I, I, I made a comment on, on Jimmy. So I like Jimmy Dore, but I actually said, look, this this guy, you may think he's saying all these things for the wrong reason. But read his book. Look what he said about the whole class of them, because, you know, um, it's very binary. Um, yeah. It's a big one. You know, mainstream thing. It's got a huge audience, Jimmy, or a huge, you know, it, 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 it is. I, you know, he, he's very popular. I mean, he's very popular with me. He really makes me laugh. He's, he's you know, and, and I think he's a, he's, he's a good egg, you know. Um, but. But this is the this is the thing you see, is that he and that other guy are more on the same size than he realizes. But he hasn't yeah. brought out, you know, so whilst they may be on opposite sides on that issue, the wider issue and what they should both be talking about is what is the value to Twitter of Twitter to Elon Musk and whose toes is he really treading on in buying Twitter? And that's when you've got to get the shoe off stuff and realize it's about surveillance capitalism and people arguing and ne- negotiating their degree in what becomes the central value system for the new debt-based, carbon-based monetary unit. Yeah, where well you get measured for your behaviour. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, you know, it's here, it's all there to see. And, and now is the time, right, for people to actually stop telling fucking stories and say, right, we've seen your cards. Now here's our hand. Right. And, 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 yeah, I mean, you, and, you and, and yeah. we rage you and we call you and we're going to win this bloody game. It's as simple as that. Well, I think you and I have had chats, including open banking for about two years, maybe, uh, mm-hmm. maybe a bit less than that. Um, I know open banking in the EU was, you know, it was really pushing forward there from because when I was talking to people at that bank that I worked for in 2015, then they would talk about open banking a lot and yeah. open banking in a way, you know, when you said odd half for white people, I mean, obviously any EU directive for open banking is basically that, isn't it? Because the people that analyze Ardha, they said it's sold as welfare, but actually it's an ecosystem for APIs uh, in order to mine Indian data and to sell. Hmm. So open banking is the same thing. And so, yeah, I mean, I remember the moment where we put them together. Um, don't remember when it was, but we put them together. And now it's even more clear in my mind what you've just said. Um, hmm. And so the PR for open banking in the EU worked well in the sense that no one asked any fucking questions you know it just goes yeah. through but my ex-wife okay she was um when we were you know this is back in the late 90s early 2000s uh she was on one of the oversight ombudsman committees about smart meters for the electricity board when that industry was liberalized in the same way that open banking is supposed to liberalize the, the, the banking sector and what they're basically saying is that um uh it, you know Klarna and hmm. their predatory yeah yeah right um there'll be more Klarnas. what it is is it it's it, it's a way of getting off balance sheets the sort of behaviors that banks want to indulge yeah, in w- w- without without damaging their main brand so shadow banking isn't it that's the thing so whenever people talk about shadow banking in china they talk about loan sharks when they talk about shadow banking over here then they say the ability to issue credit without being a bank Um, and it's the same thing well there are there are several levels to it because um what, what what it is is you want to be able to make loans which are off your balance sheet that don't count towards your Baal mm. central 
funding things and all the rest Those of requirements. it. requirements, so, yeah. So that, that's one part of it. Now, so is that and, liquidity and, ratio? Is that is that what it is? Is it liquidity ratio, something like that? It's that sort the of thing. The proportion that you're allowed to lend out. But as we already said, that's honoured more in the breach than the observance. Well, just, okay, just so quickly on that, just quickly on that. Survive yeah. how things used to be done, but haven't been done that way for a long time. Yeah, just quickly to support what you're saying, there was a story about Barclays, because I don't know if they've just had an HGM or something like that. But there's a story about Barclays where some information was released and they basically said that in America at the moment, yeah, that's it. They, they so the, the story was that they can't do the buybacks that they normally would have done because they're having some issues to do with the Department of Justice or something like that in America because they were found to have lent more than they're allowed to, which is consistent with, you know, someone somewhere has said, oh, this English bank is um, lending more yeah. than it should. Uh, the, way, like the way it really works is this, in the same way that Elon Block Musk buying Twitter is him trying to get a bigger share of the pie. So none of them have been diluted, least of all Elon Musk. His net worth has increased 853 percent in the last two years. Right. So mm. you know, of all the billionaires, he has done the best out of this last couple of years. Not content with that. He's also going in to a sector which he is not a natural constituent of. So the people who are pissed off with him aren't pissed off about him giving a platform for conservatives to speak or free speech. No one gives a shit about that because Twitter is not about free speech. Anyone that thinks saying anything on Twitter makes a jot of difference apart from, you know, maybe letting a bit of steam off and getting your own blood pressure down, although it doesn't seem to work that way as far as I can see for most people. <laughs> being charitable right right but what they do give a fuck about is wow that's one hell of a chunk of change from our share going over there right because you know these are competitive people and and it's a balance of power that's going on here that's what all the fuss is about that's the story mm. yeah it, it, yeah it, 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 it it's it, it's elon musk getting a foot in someone else's camp or a toe in the door you know that that i mean it's also interesting in the sense that palantir and uh tesla uh, appear to be data companies i mean palantir is a data company uh you know which obviously does stuff and um tesla well, palantir is it, isn't it sorry it's that's teal isn't it palantir exactly yes yeah. so they're, they're they're all they're all buddies uh, is it Robert Mercer? He's Palantir too, isn't he? Isn't it Mercer? I don't know, I don't know about Robert Mercer. Uh, yeah. But I think Robert Mercer is the guy with Renaissance Technologies. So he did all Renaissance, something like that. And so he's all about semantic data analysis and, and hedge well, funds. Bumped into the other day as well, the Cambridge Analytica guy. Did he ring you up, by the way? No, I mean, he basically, he did, he did, uh, he acknowledged that I'd uh, said hello to him. And so he got back to me, but um, I haven't, um, initiated anything but on his linkedin he says that he's an ad tech guy uh which a what tech ad tech the palant i mean the the cambridge analytica guy alexander nick says that he is an ad tech consultant on his um uh, linkedin profile which is interesting because that is really what we're talking about isn't it we're talking about targeting we're talking about you know facebook is a targeting platform isn't it uh, web SEO and um that sort of thing it, it, what we're talking about goes way beyond that oh no i'm just saying that it's the language that's being used that's what i meant right yeah i mean it, that that that's a species of the same sort of genus as it were <laughs> yeah it's the presentation i mean basically he was an election swinger and he's calling himself an ad tech guy mm. yeah so As I say, I mean, I, I, I um, two, two big takeaways of the last few days for me, and I only spotted the open banking on the 
HSBC app this morning because I needed to check there's some money going into that account and I needed to check if it had arrived yet. So, you know, is that and yeah. then I saw that and, and, you know, if you didn't know what open banking was, you wouldn't give it a second thought. You'd probably think it's just another bunch of small print bullshit. But because I know what open That's banking what is, I yeah. thought, blimey, that's interesting what 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 are they saying when also how can you argue with that collocation of terms open banking you know it, you know yes minister i think the first the first one is uh, open government you know and, and of course they say a terrible idea but i mean you know we've, we've promised it so you know so here they do yeah. it the other way around you know instead instead of saying secure banking they just call it open banking from the beginning and it's anything but secure yeah it's just it's I mean, a, it's, it's, it's it's a giveaway you know, we're giving away your data and we're giving away everything about you to whoever it is that needs to know all about you. It, they paint it as this great benefit to the banking consumer. The customer comes first, you know, and all the rest of it. And it's it's really just a, a, a cast iron guaranteed way of the computer saying no more often than not. For for. for for reasons you had no idea the computer knew about those things. Well, well let me give you an example of UK Aadhaar. Mm-hmm. I am on uh, a particular universal credit um, kind of allocation. Mm-hmm. And when I worked uh, recently, then that affected so, that, so that's DWP, universal credit. And so when I work, that's HMRC for sure. Um, mm-hmm. And there was communication between HMRC, DWP and the local authority. So the council tax support that I had for being on universal credit and not earning uh, any money then was taken away and recalculated and i was told that uh, i mean it was interesting because i applied for the support after i'd paid the money so then they said oh you don't owe us that money and then they said you've been earning money so then they started charging me for two years ago and last year and this year even though my work in those years is the same Mm -hmm. as what it always was so i asked can i have a look at the conditions and stuff uh they haven't got back to me um and of course there's no change um very in yeah it, it, the the big question is and so on the sit rep, it's a bit like to tell you how much you really owe and stuff like that on the sit rep for this situation report it's this right here are some unresolved questions do you really want to be governed by an algorithm right now it, it one of the early parts of this was when they started doing automatic parking fines and speeding fines where if you paid it earlier you got a discount and you didn't go to court you could choose not to go to court pay it and have a discount and it basically that's automated in the justice system and justice by all algorithm right and 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 this is this is the thing so it's not even a call center it's not even an offshore call center right it's government and it's tyranny by algorithm. You know, I, it, it's absolutely. I mean, it's a yeah. Because dystopian. also, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. So not only can you not talk to the algorithm uh, and 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 uh, and dispute, but also you don't even know what the algorithm is made of. So you know, here, when you here, ask, here it is, right? The black. The message. The message at the end of the sit rep right end of the situation report here's the message the great reset proposes tyranny by algorithm is that what you really want from the opportunity we're told to build back better represents so you know how so what 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 do we propose to put in place right what and and we're as cognizant with what type of technology is out there what can be used i mean i was reading um 
Bruce Charlton, Zombie Science, the other day, and he is basically saying, you know, a science has just become a kind of another form of of, of corporate bureaucracy, and 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 proper science just isn't being done. And what he says is proper science is supposed to have the the truth, you know, creating truth statements about factually fault, you know, falsifiable truth claims is, is what science is. Whereas Can I jump in? It, yeah. Um just before you called, um, because I'm sorting the place out, um, I saw two books that I hadn't seen since I bought them. Uh one of which I'd never looked at and the other one which I had. Um, the first one was experimental fiction that came out in 2014. And that's interesting for me in the sense that you were talking about narratives as soon as you started. Uh, mm. And that was quite interesting. And they actually almost do tables of um, what you might call uh, traditional fiction, which has beginning, middle and end and what it seeks to do and experimental fiction and what it does. And. Um, and. And it certainly doesn't give you closure. Um, I, it, the other book. On experimental fiction. Have you read Yates is Dead? It, uh, it, it I, take it, I take it it's not Yates. It, it's, it's fantastic. No, it, 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 it basically it's a whole bunch of Irish writers and they each write one of the chapters. So w one of them wrote the first chapter, got sent to the second one who then wrote the second chapter from that, and then the third person from that. And it's called Yates is Dead, and it's brilliant. It's a real rip raw right, Irish yarn. But yeah, I mean, that, it's pretty experimental, but, but it's, it's great yeah. fun. Oh, nice one. Um, I shall look for that. The other book that I looked at was Everything and More by David uh -huh. Foster Wallace, which is his work on Infinity. Uh, I say his work, he's writing it for an audience. Um, of people who might not normally read about infinity and mathematics and stuff like that. The introduction is by somebody called Neil something. I can't remember who it was, but they start talking about what it's like if you go to university in the Midwest. So mm -hmm. not the coasts. And he said that the way in which David Foster Wallace has written this book uh, tells you a lot about where he grew up in. And they were basically saying that if you go to, the, they said there's three tiers of university in America. The, um, every state gets two universities. Um, it's the, the big university and then the state university. And then they also talked about a third one. And it said the big one does liberal arts and science and all of that computing. The second one is more agricultural based. And the third one, I can't remember what it said, but it was saying that if you're from the Midwest and you go to the universities around there, then you don't have, I think he called it the Promethean, um, I can't remember, it was the Promethean something. Basically, he was saying that in the other places on the coasts, those universities, it's the priesthood. So if you release a pop book and you're a top university guy and you're early in your career, that is really frowned upon anything. So basically, as, as what's his name, Chesterton would say, mystification. You know, the mystagogue. So, you know, you're, you're a top scientist, but you're a mystagogue because you prefer for people to not really actually understand what you're saying. And um, the but the Midwest people, they treat all they treat everyone the same and they are able to explain really complicated things in simple ways, which is actually mm -hmm. what it's all about. But he was basically saying Foster Wallace is one of those guys, which is how he manages to combine talking about complicated things using not folksy, but sentences that are quite normal, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think both of those things, I, I just think it's quite interesting that I was that I happened to look at the experimental fiction thing because we're talking about narratives and then yeah. that opening, which is talking about really complicated things being explained I'll, in simple it, ways. Uh, these I'll, are two I'll, things that we don't get. Yeah. In my case, we're talking about me being hardly sick of narratives because I, 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 you know, I, I think when you're at w w when you're learning about a subject, all well and good. Uh, 
but you, you have to get to the point where you're going to make some predictions, you're going to make some proposals. And now is the time for our side, the 99%, to put firm proposals forward, right, and to agree on them. And we're always going to invite out vote the 1% because there's 99% of us. But it still doesn't mean that we must uh, suggesting that we do. Yeah, I take it that you're not suggesting uh, that we do uh, sortition and citizens assemblies. No, I, 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 I'm not. If that's what people choose to do for their. But what, what I'm saying is, is this is that um, if we if 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 we value our liberty and our democracy, or our, our ideals of liberty and democracy, right? Um, we need to put up for um, democratic consideration our proposals for going forward from here. We're told by this inner cadre of technocrats, right, that the system is broken and that there's an opportunity to build back better. OK, mm. right. Well, let's let's put our proposals of what Build Back Better looks looks like at the human grouping level, at the local level, and then scaled up to where it overlaps in that direction, as opposed to this global overclass overview, technocratic, top down. The system is broken. This is how we build back better, considering that the design of the system and the system that has failed was actually designed by, ran by and is still owned, run by, designed by and maintained by the very people proposing an alternative. Which is just nuts. Did you I mean, does is this similar to what's in flat pack democracy? I'm talking about the bit where you're talking about involving people. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, it was recommended I should read it. I, I, I got about halfway through it and didn't find much novel or, you mm. know, I mean, it's it's, um, you know, there's nothing to me. There was nothing as an anarchist. There's absolutely nothing remarkable in in that book. And it, yeah. it has worked in the little corner. of You know, it was my ex-wife that recommended it to me. It's it's uh, uh, it's near where where, 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 where where she now lives. Um and so from that point of view, um, so it probably is because what I'm saying is nothing new and what it says is nothing new. Yeah, but still requires a, a revisit for many people. But regardless, the things that you're talking about are so, uh, if we're going to be. And what, what you can do, if, if, you, if you read the sit rep that I've done, OK, which could be improved upon i mean, I mean of course it could uh, but it's 350 words it's four paragraphs and it's a proper sit rep okay and then there, the one i did yesterday has got links and one of the links is to my going direct para paradigm mind map which i've continued to work on for the last month now and and and, and is it's getting very very useful um in terms of taking a central idea and then looking for some some sparks off that. Right. You know, what else is, you know, it, it's a real mm. it, it should be a real conversation starter. So does sit rep mean what the fuck is going on right now? Is that what it means? A situation report is a concise summary of um, what's happened to date actions taken today actions to be completed and then issues risks and needed decisions going forward so there are four four sets uh, and, and also i've put a link to um strat for the intelligence thing they call themselves something else now okay um on wikileaks that there, there, there's their memo to all of their operational people who are responsible for writing sit reps for intelligence as they come in. So the people on what, et cetera. So it, 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 it is a military intelligence type of yeah. idea. Communication so strategy. You just imagine some chap with a with a pointer and a, a mat. So they go, hi, ha, ha, ha. 
Huns here, we're here, tanks here, infantry here. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, but anyway. That's where we are, isn't it? Well, this is the thing. We've had two years of this, okay? We don't need another fucking story. What we need is some sit reps. We need to get on with some some brainstorming and stuff. And actually, you know, um, we've all been quick enough to criticise, you know, and sort of say, well, Klaus, this, you know, Uval Harari, whatever. Right. Right. We don't like what they're saying. We think they're wrong. Right. We all know the problems that we all face in our life. How do we make them better? Let's start with saving the NHS, for goodness sake. You know, do you save the NHS by having medicine by algorithm? Do we really think so? So, you know, people should be looking at Chris Gill's stuff and, and what he's saying about, well, look. Bob Gill, yeah. Bob Gill, you know. So there are real experts out there with this stuff, OK? But stop mm. the narrative, OK? At, at some point, when you, ex when, when, you, when you have won the argument, and we have won the argument, OK? Yeah. You then have to say, right, look, we've won the argument. We're going to stop... Um, arguing with you right we're now going to put our proposals forward and now then you argue with us you okay that and that isn't happening and until it happens so the first, the, so from my perspective first thing i could do is i could um find out what today bob's proposals are in relation to that particular thing and I, 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 the people yeah, and the people I, around him Something like that would be great because it's a call to action. So, you know, we've had all the stories, we've run all the arguments, there's, there's been this great debate going on for a couple of years, okay? The yeah. other side are stalled. They ain't going to make the finishing line, right? And we're absolutely crazy if we think, right, well, you know, let's wait until they start pushing again before we push back. No, it's our turn. We have proposals to make and we must um, actually put them forward and get them out there. People are listening. OK, so the, what are the other what are the other fields? So, so I just suggested Bob, because basically, don't forget, Roger, I'm here now and I'm not currently. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I can I can basically find people and actually get some of this conversation going. Well, Richard Verner, he does interviews online with people. Why don't you drop him a line and say, look, you know, the the we've won the argument, right? The other side, mm. obviously, are going to make the finishing line. It's now time for us to put our proposals. Can I ring you up and just, you know, just talk to you about what it is that you recommend? Okay. Say that to, you know, we all know what they've said. Because we've had it ad nauseum. It's on the beat, you know, they've got all the media in the world to, 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 to tell their story, right? Well, they've told their story, right? But it hasn't come true. And it won't come true because yeah. they're wrong. And we proved that they're wrong. But now it's our go to say, right, we've, we've shown you wrong. We've told you why you're wrong. This is the proposal. This is these are the proposals that we're putting up to take forward and this is what the discussion needs to be and we'll have this discussion and then out of that discussion we will have a game plan to go forward where everybody is on board right unlike this top down we know what's right blah blah your approach has not worked you know, it's fallen down within its own terms. You can't even agree with yourselves. You're totally inconsistent. Right. And you're talking um, about a whole bunch of made up stuff. You know, your, you know, your, your transhumanist fan sci fi fantasies. Right. Right. We're not going to um, we're not going to humor you anymore. You've lost. You ain't getting over the line, right? We can get this over the line and we can call it build back better, but it will be building back and it will be better. 
and it will be on the human terms, which makes sense to because we don't believe that one size fits all. May I um, may I just um, also say this? On Saturday morning, you know how it was the end of the month just now. So on Saturday morning, because what I remember is at the end of the month, I think on the last Friday of the month, it's supposed to be a day when private members bills can go through. Um, you, you know, they, they there's a timetable and uh, and that's the bit where if somebody says no, then uh, it dies. And if nobody says anything, it goes through to the second stage and the third stage. But this is non-government uh, business that can become law. Um, so I listened to in Parliament today on the radio. It's about half an hour long. I listened to it on Saturday morning from Friday night. And it was very interesting. They probably spent 15 or 20 minutes talking about uh, drinking culture in Parliament. And, oh, it's terrible and all of this kind of stuff. Um, And then they talked about the way in which for quite a while in the last year, the Lords has been overruling the Commons, the government, on uh, Mm. different elements of some of the law they want to put in. and then they spoke about the new way of doing government, which is essentially to put a law through with almost no detail in it whatsoever. And then afterwards to use statutory in- instruments and delegated legislation. I think that's those are the terms uh, to do the finer points, which nobody gets to debate. It just goes mm-hmm. through. Um, and it was really interesting to, to, to note that. So. There's going to be the state opening of parliament in about a week. Mm-hmm. So next week. So parliament's kind of not in not functioning. I don't know if that's because it's a year timetable for parliament or whatever. But either way, um, what was interesting was also the proportion of time given to talking about drinking culture in parliament. Um, and then they tell you these other things where you say, so what you're saying is there's actually no accountability or democracy whatsoever. And they're saying it in a regrettable way very much kind of defeatist in passing so they can't say they haven't said it you know they have said it but they put it as as the final thing and well i mean it's a classic case of where the self-regulation isn't working and doesn't work so the chartist movement one 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 of one of the i one of the the pillars of the chartist movement in the late 1860s or whatever it was was that there should be a right of recall for constituents to recall their MPs and that should be every year right as, as it is they get voted every five years and 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 if you remember there were to look there was quite a lot of pushback about um local democracy in the Labour Party which was put up by Corbyn about reselecting MPs which you know mm. it so um, I'm gonna, without getting too cork sniffy about it and all the rest of it, again, Justin Walker, um, the Hardwick Alliance and the New Chartist Movement, they produced an excellent video called Pushback 2022-2023. Um, and it talks about all of that sort of thing. Um, they they they've got as far of, of of actually different chapters across the country where people can get together. I've put it on the front page of Wiki Ballot. Oh, Wiki Ballot stands up. I mean, it's it's shadow banned to hell and back. Wiki Ballot. Um, it, it it was it was getting about I don't know ten new people signing up every week, which happened for about two years. So about two thousand people had actually signed up to it. Right. Wow. Um, but but no one has signed up to it for about the last six months. Yeah, it's obviously also, shadow- nobody, nobody, nobody even thinks of democracy anymore. And we've got local elections coming up. I don't think anyone's even awake. It, well, and we've just had the French election, which you can't really call democracy. So, you know, I, mm. you know, d- d- democracy was put very much on the back seat after November 2016 and July 2016, Brexit and and, 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 and and Trump. And prior to that, in Europe, when the Irish were asked to vote again and when all the elections on the Maastricht Treaty were cancelled because people were going to vote against them. So, so, so it goes back even further than that. Did I, have I told you what they did in Algeria in 1992? 
Mm -mm. Um, In Algeria in 1992, the Islamist party won the election uh, and it got cancelled immediately. And a friend of mine told me 10 years later, this is how I heard about it. I was living in in Paris and somebody told me that in Le Monde, they described the situation and they called it a coup d'etat démocratique. Um, you know, to to prevent the election yeah. uh, victory from being de- designated as a victory. Um, so yeah, the uh, the double speak is incredible. You you did tell me about that. That's uh, but there you go. I mean, it's um, that's the old uh, Carlin joke, isn't it? You know, they wouldn't let you vote if it did any good. Yeah. Well, of course, you know. They're not really letting people vote anymore because it's not actually going along with the pre-ordained, pre-predicted, pre-packaged, algorithm-directed opinion manipulation that is built into all of the stuff that people call social media. You know, let's think of what social media really is, right? It, it it it's it's what it is it, 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 it is it's group group peer pressure mind control uh, so it's it's got all of the worst aspects of subliminal advertising uh, get, when subliminal ad- guess, guess a, yeah carry on when when that came to 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 you know public opinion the court of public opinion in in i think it was the early 1970s there was uproar and that was just the subliminal advertising the 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 flicker rate of the screen and how hypnotic that is you know is is still little known um but but it's absolutely true you know the flicker rate of a cathode ray tube in a television now, how they replicate that with flat scheme, LEDs and all the rest of it, uh, you know, I'm not power. Yeah. Well, well, guess what the people... first guess? Guess what the first electronic book that I ever read was? This is in 2010 when I bought my first ebook. It was yeah. Understanding Media by Marshall McLuhan. And <laughs> as I was reading it, so there's a there's a serious irony here as I was reading it. And the medium is the message is, you know, sort of chapter one or something like that. As I was reading it, he starts off talking about electric uh, light bulbs and saying how light bulbs are used on big adverts in order for you to, you know, take the information. in. And then I'm reading this electronic book, which has got a kind of light in it, and I'm reading it. And when I see that medium, this message, and he starts explaining what he really means by all of that, I, I realized, oh, so the medium through which I'm reading this is an electronic book. And what he's saying is the content does not matter. What matters is that you are taking in information from a device, whether that Mm. is a book, a newspaper, whatever technology. And so when you said, what is social media? Oh, you know, social media is control. Uh, And as you said, you've got this clack over here making noise at this clack. And it's that's all it is. It's competing clacks. And it reminds me of when I used to um, do spread betting and I asked them how they how they calculate everything. Um, they basically just said, well, you know, people are taking different positions and we just net it all off at the end. Mm. You know, that's, you know, for, for us as the broker. So in the same way, you've got noise on one side, noise on another. I mean, obviously, with social media, you can have noise on infinite sides, um, but everyone's cancelling each other out. And, you know, you can have a winner, which is what it's well, about. It's about creating an opinion that uh, overrides, make it trend, make it hashtag, sh- make it trend. And um, it's not sh- one voice. It's about drowning. Shuboff says about two things. One, the Pokemon Go experiment, which was a Google Earth experiment to do with uh, manipulation of, 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 of people. But there's a known Facebook experiment where they literally were ex- uh, experimenting with mood control, making people yeah. happy, making people sad. Yeah, they got into trouble for that. Relatively. Well... Mark Zuckerberg's net worth still went up 73% in the last two years, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, I mean, they, they probably just went, oh, look, you've caught us for a second. Let's try again. So, you know, I, so I uh, begs the question, right? Really? How much trouble do they get into? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they don't. 
Yeah, being when caught is when they yeah, when there is a fiasco. Getting into trouble, getting into trouble carries with it some sort of meaningful consequences, right? Getting into yeah. trouble, Get, getting caught with no consequences is not getting into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so Roger, I wanted to say to you this. I think I've said this to you before, but you know when you said um, the surf's up, it, mm -hmm. it's going to cost you less. It's going to cost you less if you um, if you give people wages than if you just um, have them as slaves. Uh, and so we we went through a list, didn't we? You know, the vote system, the wage system, the tax system, the food system, the university debt system. I think there were a couple of other ones which have all got you know, a completely counterintuitive uh, reality uh, to what people well, think it does. Well, look, one of the biggest pennies that has dropped for me in all of that is what Shubhav said about the um, Ford Motor Company deciding they wanted to get into the uh, the information harvesting thing. And I'd already had the insight that that that. that that's actually happening in my industry too. The data points, the building information management, okay, the granularity of it doesn't make any sense for managing the building or providing the occupier or the homeowner. Right, for a different reason. For a more, you know, to, to, to get the most out of, of it from their point of view, right? So the level of legislation. Yeah, so they're taking the data for something else. Is this surveillance capitalism and well that's who exactly owns, what, what's his name uh, Kiri Be the Q Q Q Q Be bono of all of that okay is obviously that um it allows for a full spectrum feudalism okay and feudalism and slavery um at one level of technology through the 20th century, okay, meant that you couldn't have full spectrum uh, surveillance capitalism. But full spectrum surveillance what? It's not full spectrum surveillance capitalism anymore. It's full spectrum surveillance feudalism. And that's the only thing that she's getting wrong, calling it surveillance capitalism. It's surveillance feudalism. Mm. And the person who gets the feudalism bit right is Joel Rofkin. And Joel Rofkin's book, the, his, his feudalism book, which is very good. And he's given some very good lectures. And then the What's other thing called? about Joel, pardon? Joel What's Rofkin. Uh, I think it's called Neo-Feudalism or something. Um, oh, yeah, no, you mentioned it, actually. Yeah, no, no, you mentioned it. Right. I, well, I did yeah. a blog about it. And, the, um, and then there's he and this South African guy that was interviewed on politics and empire okay the south Af african guy and joel rothkin right jointly for quinell or Qu quillet magazine rather which is you know is supposed to be what well, is right wing right for people who bother with those labels right now what's it i was reading something the other day that was talking about the left wing and the right wing and it's basically a uh uh, th there's a there's a group called Architects for Social Landlords uh, for, for Architects for social Housing. Social housing, right? social housing. Yeah. Ash. And, and the, that guy's written a brilliant is in the middle of writing a brilliant book being serialized about neo fascism, bringing back all of this stuff. Right. And and he mentions Joel Rothkin and someone else on the and, and sort of how embarrassing it is for, you know, People on the left and people on the right are finding themselves increasingly on the same side and often <clears> without even kind of realising it. I mean, the first time I pointed this out was I pointed out to David when I did that interview with him that the UKIP 2015 manifesto and the Green Party manifesto were basically the same manifesto with, 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 with just a couple of differences around windmills and fracking. They were the only two differences. They both advocated a, a, a Euro election in or out. OK, the Greens were saying stay in and, and UKIP were saying out. Have we cut off again? <laughs>